the challenge of the Yukon. On, King! On, you husky! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. The early spring sunshine sparkled on the snow as Sergeant Preston drove his dog team along the trail beside the river, leading into the town of Whitehorse. He halted the team suddenly, however, when he saw a figure walking out on the ice of the river. Oh, Hi, you Hello out there. Come off that ice. It's dangerous. Hello. What did you say? Come in off that ice. King, it's cracking between her and the shore. Stand still. Don't move. Stand still. I'll get a rope out to you. Don't move. Come on, King. Take the end of this rope, boy. Take it out there. Out to the ice, King. On, fella. Help. Hurry. It's moving. My dog's bringing a rope. Hang on to it. Steady now. Get the rope. There she goes. The ice on which the girl stood suddenly gave way just as the dog reached her. She grasped King's collar, and both of them went under the icy water. Preston waded into the river as King came up, towing the girl. Help! Help! Help me! Come on, King. Help! Good work, boy. There! There, I've got her. There you are. Are you all right? I, I don't know. Yeah. I'll put you on my sled. Oh, I, I'm so cold. There. Now we'll wrap you up. Yes, King, old boy. We'll have to move fast and warm up. One King! On your head! That evening, Sergeant Preston called at the house of Judge Fitzgerald, whose granddaughter he had saved. Well, hello, Sergeant. Come in. How are you, Doug? Uh, take off your parker and sit down. All right. Oh, I'm sorry I wasn't here today when you brought my granddaughter home. I certainly do want to thank you for saving her life. The king did most of it. She wasn't far out from shore, fortunately. Oh, I've certainly had my hands full with that child ever since she got here. Oh, is she visiting you? Oh, she's here for a couple of weeks. If I can keep her alive that long. Thank heaven her visit is almost over. I'm... I'm very, very fond of her, but she's too much for an old man like me. She's quite lively, eh? Lively? I thought when girls got to be 15, they were almost grown up, or I'd never have let her family send her up here. Well, 15 is an adventurous age. Oh, I just can't keep her out of trouble. Life at her age is all romance and adventure. If things don't happen to her naturally, she goes out and looks for them. I bet she's a big favorite with her grandfather, though. Oh, I'll admit she has <laughs> a wound around her little finger. But she drives me wild. You're her hero now. You occupy a whole page in her diary entitled, Saved by a Handsome Mountie. Oh. <laughs> well, Judge, the reason hmm? I wanted to see you tonight is a message I got from headquarters today. Oh. Do you remember Bart Nichols and Blackie James, <laughs> the two men you sentenced about a year ago? Oh, yes. Robbery and attempted murder, wasn't it? I remember they threatened to kill me if uh, they ever got out. Headquarters sent word today that they've escaped. Escaped? They may be headed in this direction. There was a robbery at Field Junction two days ago, and the thieves fit their description. Oh, I doubt that that threat meant anything. Well, it's best to be careful. If it weren't for Betty, I wouldn't be concerned. I shouldn't want anything to happen to her. Grandfather! May I come in? Oh, uh, here's Betty now. Uh, come in, Betty. Sergeant Preston is here. As if she didn't know. <laughs> oh, Sergeant Preston. Oh, I'm so glad to see you now that I don't look like an old drowned rat. Well, Betty, how do you feel after that cold bath you had this morning? Oh, I'm sure I'll be all right. It was just the shock that bothered me. Well, I hope I shocked some common sense into your head. You knew that that ice was dangerous. Oh, Grandfather, I didn't. What? 
Oh, and here's that beautiful dog who helped you save me. Hello, you wonderful thing. Oh, you're a marvelous doggy. That's what you are. Oh, Betty, he's not a lap dog. And look, you're making him feel silly. <laughs> well, I guess King and I had better get going. We have a big day ahead tomorrow. I have to get an early start for Carson City. Come on, fella. Your life is just one adventure after another, isn't it, Sergeant? It gets exciting at times. I'll keep an eye open for Bart and Blackie, and you'll be careful, Judge. Oh, don't worry about me. Here's your parker, Sergeant. Thanks, Betty. <laughs> Betty, well, of all the things you've ever done, she snipped a button right off your tunic, Sergeant. Well. <laughs> I want a button off the very jacket you wore when you rescued me. I'll keep it forever. You want to arrest her for petty larceny, Sergeant. I'll throw another one on for you, if you come back tomorrow. But this one is mine. All right, child. You keep it. Child? I'll be back from Carson City day after tomorrow, Judge. All right, Sergeant, and drop in at the courthouse. Come on, King. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Sergeant, and thanks for the button. Good night, buddy. Hmm. You'd think after saving a woman's life, he'd be more interested in her. <laughs> child, child, where do you get these romantic ideas? <laughs> oh, I'm not a child. Uh, oh, Grandfather. Hmm? Which trail leads to Carson City? The one going straight north through town. Why? Do you think Sergeant Preston would mind if I met him on the way back? Just for a short ride on his dog's feet. Now, Betty, you've been trouble enough to the sergeant. I don't want you bothering him anymore. So he's coming back day after tomorrow. It was two days later when two men trudged through the snow in the woods hunting. They paused as least the trail that led from Whitehorse to Carson City. Better have a look first, Bart. Make sure nobody's on the trail. I'll stay back here. Ah, oh, there ain't a chance in a hundred. Help! Oh, somebody help me! Listen, that, that's a woman. Well, we ain't letting her see us, Blackie. Help! Help! Sneak up behind them trees. See if you can see her. Help! Look, it's a girl. She's staggering from side to side. Is she all alone, do you think? Hmm, looks like it. I, I know what's the matter with her. She's snow blind. Snow blind, huh? Eh? That's why she's staggering. Think we better help her? No. Nah. We can't help. let anybody know we're in this part of the country. The only one I want to see is Judge Fitzgerald. When I'm through with him, he won't be able to tell nobody. But Blackie, it's getting dark. She's blind and there's wolves around. We ought to take her to Ma Hawkins. Ma Hawkins is hiding us. And we ain't letting anyone know it. As long as she can't see us, I'm going to steer her toward that Indian village. All right, sucker. Now, yeah, what's wrong, sister? Oh. oh, please help me. I I can't see. Something happened to my eyes. Oh, they hurt. I don't know where I am. You're snow blind. Snow blind? What do you mean? It ain't permanent. You'll get over it. You got something to wrap around your eyes? I... I lost my handkerchief. Oh, if you can only get me back to my grandfather's house. He's Judge Fitzgerald in Whitehorse. Did you say Judge Fitzgerald? Yes. You related to him? I, I'm his granddaughter. Oh, if I could only see. Yeah. Put this bandana around your eyes. Oh, thank you. I, I was planning to meet someone, but I, I didn't dream anything like this could happen. Can you take me home? I'm sure my grandfather would reward you. We'll take her back to the cabin. But, Bart, we can't... I, I want to go home. There's an old woman there. She can fix your eyes, and you can send a message to your grandfather. Uh, a message, Bart? Get him to bring a dog team out to get her. Come on, we're going to the cabin. <laughs> Darkness was falling as Sergeant Preston drove his dog team home from Carson City. King, running free ahead, suddenly stopped, then zigzagged from one side of the trail to the other, barked, and looked questioningly at Preston. Oh, hi, Husky! What's the matter, boy? What's wrong? Hmm, these look like woman's tracks going from side to side, and here are two men. What is it, fella? Find something? Bring it here, King. That's the boy. Give it to me. A handkerchief. What's this tied in it? 
A button. My button. This is Betty's handkerchief. All right, King. Guess we'd better follow these tracks through the woods. Come on, boy. We'll leave the team here, and you and I will see what this is all about. Betty lay on a cot in the corner of Ma Hawkins' cabin, half asleep. Bart and Ma Hawkins talked in low tones. It's dangerous, I say. I'm hiding here, and I'm just as guilty as you if we're caught. You won't be caught. The judge will just never be found, that's all. You should have gone with Blackie. He's liable to get in trouble. Nobody's ever seen Blackie with a beard. The judge won't know him. They could spot me in a minute. I don't like it. He might not not come. He'll come when he reads his granddaughter's note. <laughs> and she sent one of her mittens, too. I still don't like it. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? No, I... I'll take that gun. There. Is that you? Betty, are you all right? I, I still can't see. I'm snow blind. But these people have been very good... This to happens to be one of the escaped convicts I'm looking for. Where's the other one, Betty? What? Why, well, he went to get grandfather. I, I sent him a note to come for me. There. That sounds like them now. You, Bart. Not a peep out of it. We'll let Blackie walk right in. There it is, Judge. He's in there. Why, hello, Sergeant. How did Blackie you... Blackie, run. We're trapped. Why aren't you? After him, King. Judge, here's my gun. You watch, Bart. I'll get Blackie. Right. Blackie raced blindly through the forest. The one man he feared most in the Yukon was Sergeant Preston, but he feared the Mounties' great dog, King, even more. His one thought was to put distance between both of them, yet he knew that he couldn't outdistance King. As he ran, he glanced back fearfully as he heard King's distant bark. Then he stopped and aimed his gun. If I can plug that dog, I'll have a chance. The shot went wild. Blackie started on, panic filling his mind. He was gasping for breath, fighting on in the darkness, ever conscious that King was getting closer. Then suddenly King leaped. His powerful jaws closed on Blackie's arm as the landslide once more and raised his gun. Get off me, you! Get away, you devil! Get off me! Take him away! Get him away! Get him away! I'm holding my gun. He's gone. There. All right. Let him up, King. Get up, Blackie. And don't force me to lose your own gun on you. The next day at the house of Judge Fitzgerald, Preston squirmed in his chair as he always did when being praised. Oh, it was a fine job, Sergeant, getting them both. I just don't know what would have happened to Betty and me. Well, it was a lucky thing that King picked up Betty's trail. Think of it. Saving my life twice within a week. Oh, I'm so glad you found my handkerchief with the button from your coat. King found it. I'll keep it forever. Uh, Betty, I'll give you all the buttons off my tunic if you'll just stay out of trouble for the rest of your visit. Well, it's only two days longer. Sergeant, will you take me down to the boat day after tomorrow? Yes, Betty. King and I will be very glad to put you on that boat. Won't we, boy? These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Al Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.